Uh, ah, yeah. Do you have it? Okay, so yeah, the next speaker is Ivan Di Terlizzi and uh, is talking about generalized Langevin equation, thermodynamics, and applications. So, thank you. Now, does it work? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> oh God, not a good start at all. <laughs> okay, let's suppose there is a, a K here and uh, hello everyone. <laughs> okay. So I'm Ivan Di Terlizzi. I currently am a postdoc at Max Planck with C at the uh, Institute for the Physics of Complex Systems in Dresden. And uh, first of all, I would thank the organizers for uh, letting me talk about uh, this work, which you I have been... regret. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> about this work, which I have found out during my... <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's hope oh, for the best. <laughs> Okay, um, which I carried out during my uh, time as a PhD student in Padova under the supervision of Professor Marco Baiesi. And uh, my work is about uh, the generalized Langevin equations and uh, mostly about its thermodynamic properties. So everybody here knows about the Langevin equations uh, which have been introduced at the beginning of the 20th century by Langevin to describe the stochastic motion of a Brownian particle. And uh, furthermore, everybody knows that associated to this uh, stochastic process, there is a, a set of uh, partial differential equations for the probability density function of this process, which are called the Fokker-Planck with C this time, okay, <laughs> which come in the form of a continuity equation. In the particular, we also know that, uh, that we have some stationary uh, solutions associated to this equation. And in particular, we have equilibrium solutions, which correspond to uh, uh, zero currents, while some stationary solutions, which are associated to a current which has zero divergence. In particular, for uh, uh, a force which comes from a conservative potential, and a diffusive matrix which is constant, we know that the uh, equilibrium probability density function takes the form of a Boltzmann distribution. And here are some uh, uh, experimental examples of a realization of this equilibrium distribution. But because we don't like uh, Markovian dynamics uh, in this uh, conference, uh, we consider the generalized Langevin equation where uh, there appears some uh, um, uh, memory kernel this memory kernel is uh, uh, linked to the correlation of this colored noise. And in this case, non-equilibrium is achieved by uh, um, considering a force, which may be either non-conservative or explicitly time dependent. This is the case that we are going to consider. But the problem with these uh, equations is that uh, we have no associated Fokker-Planck equations. And uh, okay, here is an example of uh, uh, memory kernel, which we have already seen a lot, and there is, should be a minus, okay. But, okay, we have no associated Fokker-Planck equations to this uh, generalized Langevin equation, and in order to circumnavigate this issue, we uh, came up with a, a modification of the Laplace transform, which is defined as follows. It is nothing uh, too fancy, it's just um, it's, uh, very deeply linked to the property of uh, frequency shifting of the Laplace transform. And uh, we apply this in first instance to the linear generalized Langevin equation, which is uh, defined as follows. So I know that uh, linear equations are uh, not very spicy, but uh, <laughs> we are also applying uh, this uh, technique to non uh, linear, uh, to a non-linear setting. Maybe I will talk about it uh, at the next conference next year. But for the moment, we stick for to the linear uh, equation. And um, 
what we have done is uh, to solve these equations by using this uh, new technique. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that in the equation, we keep these uh, uh, initial uh, time uh, unfixed. And by applying this uh, uh, modified Laplace transform to this equation, we are indeed able to uh, keep track uh, explicitly of this parameter, which may be afterwards sent to minus infinity to consider, for example, stationary states. In particular, explicitly, we find the solution of the generalized Langevin equation as follows. The solution is given in terms of uh, these susceptibilities. This is something that has already been done at the beginning of the 70s by Fox. And uh, the nice thing of this equation is that, uh, again, this uh, parameter Tm is uh, explicitly present in the solution. And furthermore, because the susceptibilities have well-defined limits for large times, regardless the form of the memory kernel, we are indeed able to consider many kind of initial uh, conditions. And uh, among all of those, uh, we consider initial conditions uh, which are in equilibrium, corresponding to Tm equal to zero, and uh, initial uh, uh, position and veloci velocity distributed as a, a, a Gaussian. This may also be obtained from uh, the study of this solution, but uh, it's actually trivial, so I won't go deeper in it. And uh, the second uh, uh, situation that we are going to consider, which is uh, more new, maybe, is uh, Tm that goes to minus infinity. So as you can see, when Tm goes to minus infinity, the argument of these susceptibilities goes to plus infinity. And because the limits are well defined, we see that, for example, these terms here go away. So we lose a, a memory of the initial conditions. We like to consider this as a generalized steady state where, indeed, memory of initial conditions is lost. By using the, proper, the Gaussian properties of the noise, furthermore, we are also able to infer that the distribution of position and velocity at time t after taking this limit is also a Gaussian. So just to recap everything, we have uh, more or less uh, shown that uh, the probability distribution associated to these initial conditions uh, has the form of a um, Gaussian with this covariance matrix. In particular, for the, these initial conditions, the covariance matrix has uh, this form. And this form of the covariance matrix cannot be changed by any uh, a deterministic protocol, which may be the center of the trap which is moving, or some external field, uh, which may be, for example, an electrical field. So in this case, no need for Fokker-Planck equations. But uh, the most important part that I would like to talk to you about are the thermodynamic properties of this uh, generalized Langevin equation, and uh, uh, in the linear case, always. And uh, to do so, we first consider the first theorem of uh, thermodynamic in the context of stochastic thermodynamics by uh, starting from the heat. And uh, to do so, we use uh, Sekimoto's definition of heat, which is this stochastic integral of involving the forces that uh, the particle is exerting on the bath times uh, the velocity of the particle. These forces can be easily be uh, obtained from the original generalized Langevin equation. Then we can consider also the variation of energy, which in this case is just the sum of a kinetic and a potential energy, and it takes this simple form. But uh, most notably, the work, which is the sum of these two quantities, has the same form as for Markovian dynamics, which means an integral of these uh, uh, protocol which is uh, changing the center of the trap times the force which is exerted on the particle itself. So this is something that, uh, oh, already five minutes, okay. So the thermodynamic work uh, has this form here, and uh, because we have the solution of the position, uh, for the position of the, of the particle, uh, it is uh, easy to, to calculate quantities. One thing that we find is that uh, the um, variance and the uh, average work and the average work uh, are uh, proportional and uh, have this uh, simple form here. It's just uh, dependence on the particular um, properties of the system. And uh, because we have this proportionality and because uh, the work is Gaussian, we have that uh, an integral fluctuation theorem holds. 
Furthermore, for in, uh, initial conditions in the infinite past, we find that the uh, variance of the work has the same form as from starting from equilibrium. In, uh, finally, what we find is that the average work in the stationary state corresponding to a uh, dragging uh, which is constant, this form of, the, of lambda and the TM go, going to minus infinity, we find this simple form which is uh, equal to the structure that we find in for Markovian dynamics, but instead of the usual, um, of the usual uh, um, fiction coefficient, we have this integral of the memory kernel. Here we could talk about uh, the fact, I, while studying uh, these issues, I found uh, some arguments saying that uh, this uh, integral should be finite, otherwise there are some uh, problems associated to it. And in this case, this is maybe another clue that uh, indeed uh, this quantity here should be finite, otherwise we would, would uh, have some thermodynamic inconsistencies. Um, okay, here is an example, but I don't have time. It wouldn't be a discussion about uh, stochastic thermodynamics without entropy production, of course, which can be uh, <laughs> split into contribution and environmental contribution proportional to the heat, a system's contribution proportional to the Shannon entropy. And for stochastic thermodynamics, the second law holds on average. What we find uh, in this uh, linear case is that uh, the rate of entropy production, which is easier to calculate, is, uh, takes the following form. So these two terms uh, are usually equal to zero in the, for initial conditions uh, that we are interested in, and we don't care about it. So the most important part is this one, where we introduce this new dynamical quantity, which is called retarded velocity, which involves a convolution between the average velocity and the memory kernel. Again, we identify a steady state for uh, a constant dragging and the TM that goes to minus infinity, where we see that the average rate of entropy production, I guess, has the same structure as for Markovian dynamics with the substitution of gamma zero that becomes gamma, the, the, the Stokes coefficient that becomes this integral from zero to infinity of the memory kernel. Again, this may be a clue that uh, indeed these, uh, the limit of this integral should be finite. Uh, how much time do I have? Nothing, basically. <laughs> okay, uh, here I just to recap some, um, some result. Uh, we consider um, um, an exponential memory kernel to show what is the effect of, the, of memory on uh, the quantities that we have studies, uh, studied in our paper. And starting from equilibrium, you see that as memory becomes stronger and stronger, the there appear some osc oscillations in the averages and the, in the variances of all these quantities. And this is a more or less uh, typical uh, um, um, property of uh, systems with memory and also inertia. In the case of the steady state, instead, we have that all the um, um, averages do not depend on the strength of this memory, while the variances are affected by it. So to conclude, we have introduced a modification of the Laplace transform, which is particularly useful to address uh, the issue of steady states. We explicitly solve the linear Langevin equation with time-dependent driving, and by doing so, we are able to calculate variances, uh, averages of many relevant quantities, such as the thermodynamic work. We also provide an explicit formula for the average rate of entropy production by introducing this new dynamical quantity, called uh, um, retarded velocity. And finally, we show that for in a steady state, the only quantities affected by the presence of memory are the variances of integrated quantities. To conclude, I would like to thank my former uh, PhD supervisor, Marco Baiesi, Professor Felix Retort, which helped uh, in the uh, uh, writing of this paper, my new uh, group uh, in, uh, at the Max Planck Institute, and of course, you for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for an interesting talk. Um, so we have time for a couple of questions. Priority given to students first. <laughs> Are you a student? Hi, uh, I'm not sure how tough this question can be, but I just, it's just because I'm not familiarized with the technique of that. 
modified Laplace transform. Uh -huh. Why does the usual one doesn't work? Because I imagine that it doesn't work. Uh, so Why do you need this modification? Because, uh, so the, I asked myself the same question when I, um, when I, was, uh, I started studying uh, these issues. So the fact is that most of the times so to study uh, the, general, the generalized Langevin equations, people uh, take this uh, initial time to be arbitrary, and then they set it to zero. But uh, we know that steady states mo most of the times correspond to initial time that a system that is going uh, for an infinite time and then it equilibrated to the some uh, kind of steady state. And, uh, and then uh, you, you see indeed a steady state. In this case, uh, because we don't have uh, Fokker-Planck equations, uh, there is no, uh, at least for, for my, from my point of view, uh, intuitive uh, uh, way of uh, it letting these initial conditions going to minus infinity. And furthermore, the Laplace transforms are very useful uh, and easy to use. So my idea was indeed uh, to introduce uh, this uh, generalization of the Laplace transform where uh, you can just track explicitly from of these uh, initial conditions in the, in the past, and then you just send it to minus infinity, avoiding, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, singularities or anything else. So I hope I addressed your question. No, just a comment. I, ca I can provide you an example which uh, this gamma hat, so the integral, uh -huh. is, uh, is uh, finite, but you can make it arbitrarily large. Actually, it becomes infinite at critical point. So You have an example? Of no. course. If you pay, <laughs> I can give it to you. Okay. Please tell me. <laughs> then. Yeah, I also have the, a question about this generalized Laplace transform. I'm afraid it's going to be a stupid question. Um, it just caught my attention. Also, you're you're taking T m to minus infinity. Yeah. But this must very severely constrain the functions g of t. You can do that, right? Because then what you have is you have a for negative times an exponential explosion by the La, by the exponential factor, right? I agree with you. So need to have even functions that are b of exponential order in both directions? Or, I mean, this must constrain just for the mathematical existence of this. Yeah, yeah, of no, this. of course, of course. So uh, let's say that most of the times you apply this Laplace transform to functions which are causal, for example, susceptibilities or the memory kernel. So this issue doesn't come. And uh, furthermore, I honestly tried to avoid these issues by just explicitly solving the equation and then uh, hoping that everything went well. So in this case, for example, you can see that the only dependence on this initial time is in the, um, in the susceptibilities, so. No, because, you know, typically if you have a function that has support on an entire real line, mm -hmm. you take a Fourier transform. Yeah. Right, and that is also analytically nicely defined. So I guess that also doesn't work here for some reason which I just couldn't get. So in this case, the Fourier transform doesn't uh, take track of the initial conditions. So if you take the, la the Fourier transform of the, uh, of the equation, yeah, you, uh, you have the convolution theorem yeah. and everything, but you don't have explicitly the initial conditions here, which is the thing which I tried to, to, to have here because at the beginning of my PhD, I wasn't so... Um, so you can, but it's what is it still a linear transform? Does it have all the all the mathematical properties of a Laplace transform? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, but uh, in this case, uh, I think it's uh, more easy to see the dependence on initial conditions, and it's more straightforward to consider steady states. So it's like a sum of two Laplace transforms when you flip the time, or well, actually, again, uh, this is a. You can see it as a um, consequence of the property of uh, Actually a difference, fre sorry, frequency sh shifting. Because if you do a, a um, um, change of variable, yeah. you just obtain a e to the minus tm here. Yeah, this I understand. But then you also have a delta function there, right? If you do that, you are not supposed to consider times where this gets negative, as far as I understand. So this is the, it's really a mathematical question. I understand it works. Because you, you got the result, I just <laughs> cannot understand how. Right? We, we can we can discuss after that because I okay. think it's okay. Yeah, but it's very it's very interesting. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.
since you mentioned several times that there is no Fokker-Planck equation, so I'm wondering, uh, can you make a Mankovian in embedding for the memory kernel that you suggested by just adding one auxiliary yeah, yeah, variable? Yeah, no, of course. In the and then you do have a Fokker-Planck equation. In the simple case of uh, an exponential memory kernel, you can do Markovian embedding and everything works fine. But all the results that I present are also valid, for example, for fractional Brennan motion where you don't have uh, any straightforward or trivial way of uh, doing a Markovian embedding. Here, to be totally honest, I, I used the um, exponential memory kernel because, uh, uh, where do I have it? Uh, here, maybe? Okay. In order to find this solution, you basically have to calculate these susceptibilities, which are defined in the Laplace space. So here you have the Laplace transform of the memory kernel. If you put something too much complicated, Basically, Mathematica cannot compute these, <laughs> these susceptibilities. <laughs> so in order to make everything analytical and to get uh, these uh, all the plots that I showed you at the end, I take uh, it to be, um, to take it to be uh, exponential. But for example, as the case of uh, entropy production at the end, where you have this uh, integral from 0 to infinity of, well, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, at least it's at the end that it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so the rate of entropy production has this quantity here that is the, the integrated from zero to infinity of the memory kernel. In that case, you can uh, think of uh, some polynomial function with uh, exponential dumping, which is absolutely not trivial to calculate the dynamics uh, with the arbitrary initial conditions. But still, you are able to have an estimate of the rate of entropy production in the steady state and without uh, any particular assumption on the memory kernel. So I hope I addressed your question. OK, I see that there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of interest. So you can postpone the discussion to the next uh, coffee break. And I think we should move on in the interest of time uh, to Be the careful. next talk. <laughs> I hope so. Um, I hope I can make it. OK. So